Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new day. It's good to see you all after a long time. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning because you are faithful. Thank you because you are the almighty God. Thank you because you are the all-knowing God. Be that glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit our lectures today into your good hands. Oh Lord, please let your spirit come and dwell within us in the name of Jesus. And Father, please have your absolute way in our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, please speak through your servant, our lecturer, our pastor today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, success. All right. So, uh, We've come to the end uh, of our lecture. Uh, we just need to do the restoration of the ministry of the pastor. But uh, over the course of this entire you know, uh, uh, semester, uh, we covered quite a lot of material, right? So we looked at the fivefold ministry, looked at uh, the evangelist, and how Jesus was uh, the best example of an evangelist. Uh, and how the restoration of the evangelist happened after the early church. Then we looked at the teacher, right? And uh, and very importantly, we looked at some of the aspects of teaching. Right? Teaching involves a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of preparation, a lot of time goes into preparation. Uh, and there is a difference between a teach the teaching ministry and the pastoral ministry. Right, and then we looked at the pastoral ministry as well. So uh, we must remember that there are two things, right? One is the ministry gift that we looked at, and then is the uh, ministry function, right? So the ministry gifts uh, include gifts as an administrative gifts, teaching gifts, right? Uh, working of miracles. These are all admin uh, ministry gifts, right? And then you got the fivefold ministry, which is the functions, right? So we look at the pastor, evangelist, past, uh, you know, uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Now, even as we continue in, you know, ministry and the things we are doing, uh, I want to just encourage us. We must not be you know, uh, too focused on, okay, is this my calling? Is this what I should do? Uh, remember that um, in, in terms of gifts and functions, things can intertwine, right? Gifts and uh, the grace of God intertwines. So you could be a pastor, but you could also be a teacher. You could also be an evangelist. You can also be in the administrative role. Right. Now, for example, if you're a pastor of a church, right, it's not like you're only teaching and preaching. There will be certain administrative roles that you will have to do, right? So that is, again, a ministry gift. It's not a function, right? So it's very important to be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? Now, it's wonderful when, you know, uh, you're able to recognize that, hey, God has called me to do this. Right. So, for example, worship leader, right? God has said, okay, you know, uh, I want you to be, uh, you You will be a worship leader. You will write songs. You will lead people into worship. And that is your calling. And say, for example, we get to know it at a very young age. That's wonderful, right? Because you can, you know, grow and develop in that. Now, just because God has said you're going to be a pastor, worship, uh, worship leader, does not mean that, uh, you know, we don't involve in the other things that the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. He may ask us to go evangelize. He may ask us, the Holy Spirit may say, you do these administrative works in the church, volunteer in church, right? Because sometimes what happens is our calling uh, becomes so, you know, uh, important in our mind that we forget to do the smaller things. Or the other tasks, or we may we may neglect the other tasks, and that is something we should never do. Right? Great Apostle Paul, he knew he had the apostolic, but he also taught. He he also had 
uh, administrative things to do. Look at the book of uh, first letters to first and second Corinthians. He he brings out all the administrative things that the leaders must do. Then uh, even to the uh, church in Ephesus, writes to Timothy, you do this. These are certain things that has to be done within the church. So, so even as we continue to grow and mature in the Lord, be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You, we can never say, you know, of course, later people people will recognize, okay, he's a pastor, but or he's a teacher, or he's an apostle. But out of that will flow many, many functions, many, many gifts. Um, and so we must be open to that. What happens if we don't be open to this? Right? Because we'll be putting a stop to what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives, or what God wants to do in our life. Uh, when we say, no, I don't want to do this, then we're putting a stop. We're saying, God, no, only if it's this, I will continue. If not, I will not continue. Right? So uh, that would be the wrong thing to do. But as believers, as ministers of God, just be open. If God gives you an opportunity to lead worship, go ahead. If God gives you an opportunity to teach, prepare yourself, teach. Right? If God is giving you an opportunity to pastor a church, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've heard about the CPAP plan that uh, has come up now at APC, and next year we're going to make it international as well. Um, you know, so God can open doors in any way, right? So uh, be open to that, right? So we looked at all of these wonderful threefold uh, ministry: the ministry of the evangelist, the teacher, and the pastor, and all three of them are intertwined. All three of them can go together. One person can blow on all three of them, right? And it's most probably that if you look at, uh, like, for example, if you look at a pastor, uh, he he's going to be teaching and doing the work of the evangelist, meaning evangelizing, right? So, so it's all intertwined. And so very important, very, very important. Uh, even as we mature in the Lord, be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I, I think I've mentioned this many times. I always thought I'm going to be a worship leader. I, I knew God has called me to be a worship leader. I never thought, uh, it must have been in the back of my mind, but I never thought I'll you know, uh, teach or pastor a church. Uh, I, 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 I don't remember thinking. I always thought, okay, there's going to be a pastor. I'm going to be a church, and I will lead the worship. I always looked at myself as a worship leader. But I thank God for you know, opening those doors, those opportunities, and helping me uh, to, you know, study the word and uh, and be open to, you know, learning. And uh, you know, I, I continue to do that. I continue to, uh, you know, just wanting to learn and develop in the gifts. Um, you know, whether it's prophetic, whether it's word of knowledge, or any gift, but just developing in all of that. So what are we doing? We're not putting a box and saying, okay, God, I work only within this box. No, right? uh, be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we looked at all of these wonderful things. Uh, we'll just close uh, today with uh, the restoration of the ministry of the pastor. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just look at a few examples then if we have some questions, we can ask questions if you have any. And then we will bring this post to a close um, in this session. And then maybe next session you can study, take time to have personal studies. And what we'll also do is um, I will work on the final assessment and I'll post it probably uh, during the next week. All right. So uh, chapter 12, the restoration of the ministry of the pastor. Now, why is this word restoration used, right? In all in all all three aspects we looked at restoration of the evangelist, restoration of the teacher, now restoration of the pastor. Now, after the book of Acts, there came those dark ages. And the church was doing really well for a certain period of time, but then the uh, Roman government had control. And what happened was there was a complete uh, uh, about 600 years, that's a dark ages. What happened in those dark ages? There was no teaching. There was no preaching. There was no evangelistic work. There was no reading of the scriptures. Right? 
not everyone had a Bible. It wasn't allowed. Uh, and over time, uh, whatever the you know the leaders or the bishops or the priests would preach or you know just read from the scriptures, that was the only thing that believers had. Can you picture this? During those times, the cages, people would go to church. Maybe the priest will read a couple of portions of scripture. That was the only access to the word of God that the people had. It was the dark ages. But after that time, after the uh, uh, the rest of, after things changed, um, and and God sent missionaries and great leaders to change things. Uh, what happened? Sorry, restoring back what happened. I did a few of some of the outstanding pastors. Uh, some of them are still alive. Some of them have. Uh, passed on. Uh, let's look at the first one, right? Uh, I've just made a note of it. It's not on your notes. Uh, David Paul Yonggi Cho, right? Now, we all know about David Paul Yonggi Cho. He was about seven, uh, born a Buddhist, born and raised a Buddhist, but about 17 years old, he was uh, um, uh, diagnosed with tuberculosis. And he had this great desire to do ministry. But he didn't know what to do. Right? Uh, uh, if you go online to YouTube, you can, you know, there's even his books, his documentaries where, where he writes. Uh, you know, just like you and I, right? He just become a believer. He doesn't know what to do, right? But all he knew is he wanted to do something in the ministry. Uh, so he began to, you know, just preach the gospel to his family members. And being from a Buddhist background, many of them didn't accept him. Uh, but over time, he he started the church, right? Yoido Full Gospel Church. And when he started, he had no experience at all. Right? He he didn't know what is the role of a pastor. He didn't know, okay, this is what pastoral ministry is. I think right? all he knew was, okay, he gathered a few people, got them together, and he said, okay, let's start services. And over time, uh, actually, for the first five to six years, uh, they were about their hundreds, hundreds of people, right? Like maybe 150 or so. He was very discouraged. Well, why is nothing happening? Uh, and then over time, God gave him ideas, uh, and he started something called as a cell groups, right? And through the cell groups, uh, started in many, many places, uh, different areas, different locations. The church began to grow. And eventually, they became the biggest church in the world, uh, with over 700,000 in attendance each Sunday. Each Sunday, 700,000 people. Um, and we see that oh, over time as well, David Paul, David Paul Yonggi Cho, he, he grew in his gifts, in his calling. He began to understand what is the pastoral ministry. Uh, and he he did a very effective work in raising up leaders. Right now, so if you have anything over even uh, you know, forget about seven hundred thousand. Right? Even if you have a hundred people in your church, you need volunteers. You need a team, right? Uh, and so David Yonggi Cho was uh, you know God gave him the idea through Moses. He was reading the scriptures once and. Uh, uh, you know, when Moses, Jethro came up to Moses and said, hey, why don't you have people look after the things? Why are you doing everything and, you know, get somebody, get raise up a team? And so this really struck him and uh, he began to raise up teams. Uh, he raised up many, many teams, many, many leadership teams within the church, cell group teams. And we see that uh, he he established a strong powerful uh, church and a word-based church right? and because of the word that was being taught there were signs miracles and wonders right? and there are plenty plenty of testimonies where uh, even in small groups in the cell churches uh, you know many of them have received healings and uh, so it became a very natural thing <laughs> Uh, and 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 David Yonggi Cho was used powerfully by God as a pastor, uh, as a pastor in 
uh, in his life, right? So uh, then we look at another man named David Wilkerson. Right? Uh, you can go online and read about this pastor, a wonderful young man. Uh, this was in the early 50s, right? So the pastoral people still began to understand, right? Okay, and they call it the pastor. And this is what a pastor must do within the church. But there were no um, you know, guidelines, no proper teachings yet. So it was the early uh, 50s. And what happened was David Wilkerson, a young man, he was a pastor of a small village uh, in the United States. Uh, but he decided, you know, I want to go and I want to see the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, he was preaching about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is powerful. He's able to change his lives. But he never experienced it. He has experienced it himself, but he's never seen it. So uh, so what he decides is he says, OK, I'll go to the city. I'll go to New York City. Um, and he comes there, and he's, he begins to minister among drug addicts and uh, and gang members. Right, and he begins to minister through them, and eventually he starts a small, uh, you know, like a small church, and he calls it the Times Square Church. Right, it was a small church initially um, at Times Square in uh, 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 in in the USA. Uh, Times Square, uh, it's, right now, it's the most buzzing area. Uh, in the United States, one of the most expensive areas of the world, actually, Times Square. And he begins this small church, right? but he sees the power of God. What happens is drug addicts, gangsters, people from different gangs um, were brought to Christ through his ministry. And with his whole pastoral, this, this church ministry, many, many lives were touched. One of the things that he did was he emphasized on the power of the word and the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? Uh, and very quickly, the church began to grow. Right? Uh, uh, people started coming into the church. People started seeing uh, you know, miracles happening, prophetic words of knowledge, uh, and the work of the Holy Spirit just being manifest very powerfully. So if you read about uh, this book, called the cross on the switchblade uh, he writes there uh, on how he began his whole ministry and how the church is going so now um, the church is a huge church over seven eight thousand people uh, he has passed on but he's raised up good leaders good pastors through the pastoral team and um, which are continuing the work of the ministry right uh, but he started at a time when the whole pastoral calling was not very, you know, people knew, okay, you have a church and there's a pastor in a church, that's it. But they didn't know about the other aspects of, you know, evangelizing, bringing people to Christ, discipling them, right? Uh, and then another person was Leonard Ravenhill. Leonard Ravenhill was... Uh, again, you can just write down these names if you'd like, and you can go online and read uh, about them. And, and there are plenty of other pastors as well, right, that you can read of. I've just selected a few who are called to be pastors, right? Just, just that pastoral calling upon their life. Uh, Leonard Ravenhill, he, he wrote many, many uh, books, Why Revival Tarries, uh, Revival God's Way, um, uh, many other books, right? So. Uh, Leonard Avildsen again. Uh, it was his early forties, early fifties. As a young man, uh, he had a team of about four of his friends, and they would go and minister to people, right? Just going from one town to another, have tent meetings, um, and initially he started his ministry that way. And after a while, he uh, in England he started this church, right? A church he started, uh, and one of the things that he always emphasized on in the pastoral ministry uh, was the teaching and the preaching of God's word. Uh, in Leonard Ravenhill's ministry, there were not many miracles, uh, but his, his, his church was more established towards teaching 
and preaching of God's word. Right now, it does not mean that okay, there were no miracles at all. Right, there were miracles. There were wherever there's teaching and preaching of God's word, there was the power of God. Uh, but his his focus was more on teaching. So if you um, read about his books, he was more. Uh, you know, praying, he and his team were praying for revival. He said, Lord, let revival come into London. Uh, let revival come into this entire nation of England. So he, he was a man of prayer, right, who really focused his prayer time on revival and the things of God. So God used him very powerfully because of his church uh, in uh, East London. Uh, Leonard Ravenhill was able to uh, raise up disciples like he, he had disciple discipling programs uh, for many young people so what they would do is they would go out as a church they would go for a week uh, and they would throughout the week spend time studying God's word right, and being discipled in Christ now I know one week is too less to be discipled but he began to do you know, you know, bring in this whole aspect of discipling. Remember what Jesus said: "Go and make disciples." Right. So he brought in the aspect of discipling within the church. Of course, it was there earlier on, but he began to train people. Right. Discipling programs, disciple material, discipling material. Uh, he began to teach from God's word about discipleship, and we see that. Uh, in, in terms of the pastoral ministry, there was a restoration of discipleship, mentoring, right? And uh, again, there are many other people, just one more person, John Piper, uh, who, who again started a church and God just used him in a very powerful way, just teaching, preaching of the word of God, word-based church. And then you got... Uh, any other pastors who have really, uh, you know, uh, early 80s, early uh, old Roberts again, uh, and then there was um, uh, John Austin, uh, John Austin's father, who who started a powerful church, uh, and then we see the ministry of the pastor just growing uh, from the early 50s, 40s, 50s, uh, and right now we see that everything. Uh, you know, everyone are able to start churches, build each other up through the pastoral ministry, right? So uh, I want to leave us with this. Uh, any of you have any questions, any thoughts that you'd like to share uh, from what we have done over this entire course? Uh, any questions? Yeah, um, my pastor, sir. Yes. Uh, my, is not a, my, my is not a question. I just want to appeal. Uh, for the last uh, exam, I didn't partake of it. Can I still go back and submit my test? Okay. Uh, so, so I think the due date has already been set. Uh, so, success. Yeah. What I can do is I can just talk. See, we don't have the option to change the due date. I'll have to check with the IT team, and okay, uh, I will check with the IT team. And because once we've set the due date, we, we can't change it, right? So only the IT team can do that. Uh, but I'll need to check with them uh, if they are able to change it, right? So uh, uh, can I get back to you on that? Maybe I can email you. Okay, please do. I'll, I'll be I'll be happy. I'll be grateful if you email me, please. Sure, sure. I'll do. That. Thank I'll you. Do that. Yeah. You're welcome. Success. Yeah. Right. Right. So overall, how uh, uh, has it been a good learning? Have you been? Uh, what are some of the things that maybe some of you can share? What are some of the things that you uh, you have taken from this course, uh, uh, and you really uh, got an understanding from this course? Maybe some of us can just share. Uh, has it been helpful? Has it been something that uh, that you can apply in your ministries? I I know that many of you here are already serving in the church so uh, i know lubega is a teacher so lubega are you teaching in your church or uh, like a small group uh yeah i do pastor and teach and 
but professionally, I'm a teacher, although now I moved into administration for okay. the last 10 plus years. Okay, okay. So, Lubega, what you can do is see, you got the gift of teaching. You know, God has, you know, given you that gift. So, you can look to, you know, maybe uh, if it's something that you can prayerfully consider is, you know, uh, probably just meet with a few of them, you know, begin to uh, teach them from the word. So, you can probably have like maybe two, three friends or your relatives, get them together, start something small. Um, use the gift that God has given you, right? God has given you the gift of being a teacher. So maybe you can do book studies, you can do word studies, you can do character studies from the Bible. Um, uh, and the thing is, where the word of God is being taught, people will come, Lubega. Right? So sometimes we, we think in our mind, oh, will they come? Will they listen? No, don't worry. Uh, people, God will bring the right people, right? So if, if this is something that you are considering, you can prayerfully think about it. So uh, some of the things that I really enjoyed was uh, doing these word studies and passage studies, character studies, uh, you know, uh, in the Bible. So it, it really helps us to understand, right? Uh, bringing in the uh, culture, bringing in geography, bringing in uh, the seasons that were there during those times, the cultures during those times. So uh, yes. Anybody else would like to share? Oh. Um, I want to really say thank you so much on this topic, on this course, rather. Before, I find it difficult to teach. Mm. And naturally, I'm not the teaching type. I'm an evangelist, mm. coupled with apostolic my way. But this course, the, since last year, the more I picked up the Bible, the more I teach myself, the more I see myself teaching others. And uh, that has really helped my ministry, going to the villages and uh, breaking the word of God down to the lowest uh, sample. In fact, I was, I really appreciate and I really thank God this God came to my way. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. So, so what you can do is continue to build on this, right? Uh, so, if God is calling you to, uh, in terms of you know, um, teaching, evangelism, pastoral, it can all be a mixture, right? So, never uh, say that okay, this is what I have to do, or the, only this is what. So, if God is calling you, opening doors, uh, just go for it, right? It, it, His Spirit is empowering us. Bigger, okay. Yep, great. Right. Anybody else would like to share? Uh, if not, we can just uh, close and then you can spend the rest of the time. Yes, go ahead, Jafina. Uh, I really want to thank you so much for everything that you thought, Pastor. Uh, I think for myself, sometimes I put myself into a box like I'm an evangelist and that's it. That's all I should focus on. Uh, should not go deeper into teaching or uh, anything else. But this course has really uh, enlarged my mind to the truth that uh, I should get deeper into the word. And I also want to thank you for the little, little things that you shared in between. I remember once you shared to go and hear to the message by Dr. Miles Munro about leadership. And uh, I, I wrote it just simply. I just wrote it. But once i think after four to five days i really went back i really went and listened to the message and i sent it to all my friends because i was so much inspired by the message and those little little things that you shared really encouraged me a lot and i just want to thank you so much praise god that's wonderful uh yes so keep growing creep keep uh you know just getting opportunities just learning uh, that's never an end to learning. So, uh, uh, yeah, so that's wonderful. Anybody else would like to share? Uh, I know that John is a pastor already at our APC Mangalore. John, would you like to share your learnings from this course? Anything that you'd like to share? Uh, 
find people to work for Paul Park. So, um, you know, we've been discussing about this for a couple of weeks. Um, and it's the importance of uh, nurturing new people, uh, yeah. finding out new people. And that's been a learning and it's a lot to look out uh, for character, look out for commitment, um, and to find people and to gradually uh, nurture them. That's, that's been wonderful. And also, uh, regarding when we spoke about uh, um, pastoral ministry and also teaching, and the overlap of it and the difference of it, it makes a lot of uh, sense, um, especially when we have a preaching time and also have a teaching time. Yeah. It helps to uh, find a different, uh, different shape, different position, <laughs> find the differentiation and to, uh, and to approach that in a different way, especially in very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, John, for sharing. All right, so that's wonderful. Uh, I, I just pray for each one of you that uh, you know you continue to grow in your gifts, your calling. Uh, I had a wonderful time teaching this course, being a Ministry of the Evangelist teacher and pastor. Remember uh, that we can all flow in all three of them, all five of them, right? all five ministries, including the ministry gifts, administration, worship, anything right uh, the holy spirit just be willing to do it and uh, being faithful and small and god will bless us with uh, bigger things all right so let's close in prayer um, let me just pray uh, and uh, uh, we will w see each other again next semester all right let's pray father we want to thank you for this uh, beautiful semester this course that we've been studying lord the ministry of the evangelist teacher and pastor lord lord it's such a joy to know that you have called us you have chosen us to be your children of god and with this calling with this choosing of god you have poured out your holy spirit upon us and lord we pray that even as we continue uh journeying together lord i pray that you will oh god minister to each of our hearts oh god Lord, that we will truly, uh, Lord, begin to flow in all the gifts of the Spirit of God, all the functions of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we will, uh, Lord, open our hearts, be led by you, O God. Lord, we ask for your grace. We ask for your anointing. We ask, God, for those, maybe some of us here have plans, but we've just, uh, uh, you know, closed those plans and kept it away, O oh God. I pray, God, that this semester, uh, they will just, Lord, in this season of their lives, they will just go back to the things that have been closed, and there will be a restoration in their hearts, there will be a reviving in their hearts, in the ministry that you have called them for, oh God. Lord, we thank you for each and every student, oh God, even as they've sat through this course. I pray, God, that you will enable them, you will establish them, oh God, and empower them by your word and your Holy Spirit, oh God. And Lord, we thank you that everything that we have learned, Lord, that we will apply it in our lives and continue to grow in the gifts and callings that you have placed in our lives, oh God, and continue to be a blessing to the body of Christ. We thank you, God. We, we thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing ahead, oh God. We pray, God, that you will uh, continue to lead us and guide us, oh God. We, we give you all the praise and glory, oh God. We speak your wisdom upon each and every student, uh, even as they prepare and study through all the courses in the semester for their finals, oh God. I pray, God, that, uh, that Holy Spirit, you will uh, imprint everything that they are studying into their hearts, into their spirit, oh God, that they will be able to apply it in their lives and use them all, Lord, for your glory. May your kingdom be established through their lives, oh God. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, have a great week and a great time ahead. Uh, all the best for your final exams, and I'll see you next semester. Uh, well, thank you, sir. I will respect your email, sir. Sure. Sure. I will, I will check with the IT team and get back to you. All right, sir. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Emmanuel. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, such an inspirational you. teacher. God bless you and God bless your family. Thank you so much. God bless you, Isaac. Thank you. Thank you.